What's going on guys, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're talking about the Swords of Legend Online release patch notes. And you can see on the screen, I already have some stuff up here that I'm gonna be looking over and I'll try to interject with some video footage from the game playing in the background from the alpha that I captured. So let's go ahead and jump into here and look at the solo uh, patch notes. So it says right here, the biggest changes are they've added two additional skin tones, reworked and added the player card feature. Uh, arena times have been extended to 4 a.m. Fixed rules for character names, mini bugs have been slain. If we look at the uh, additional two skin tones, I actually put those in the last video I made about Swords of Legend Online, talking about their roadmap and some of the changes they made. They made uh, like a chocolate skin tone and a, 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 span, a tan skin tone. I want to say like a Spanish or Brazilian tan type skin tone, but it's kind of hard to really tell. Uh, people are all different kinds of skin shades. So there's still a few issues in this version, which we are actively working on, but that aren't removed just yet. We plan to add a full list of these at the bottom tomorrow for transparency and awareness sake. So I'll probably have a part two tomorrow. We'll see what they add and see how big they, those things are. So on the release details, time frame, all players who have purchased the game will have access. Previous beta codes do not provide access to the release version. And uh, the start date's gonna be July 9th. That's gonna be 2 p.m. CEST, 8 a.m. EDT and 5 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. If you don't own an edition of Swords of Legend Online just yet, you can still pre-order the game now or purchase it on release. Both are possible via our website or Steam. We know the game ranges anywhere from $40 all the way up to $100, depending on what version you get of the game. Uh, the goodies, players who participated in the betas will get the following items upon release, depending on their participation. We'll get a mass panda mount, a Draco determined avatar and frame. Players who wash their hands in the basins on three different days in beta one and or beta two uh, are going to get those things. The items will be sent to the gift pack center and can be collected there. You'll find the icon next to the shop below the mini map. If you don't receive any items but believe that you should have, please contact our support team. Please note that the items are region specific so you'll receive the items where you wash your hands. Wash your hands! Wash your damn hands! 20% Crimson Coin Bonus. So all characters in game progress from the beta and Steam demo will be reset, including costumes and other purchases. But anybody who purchased Crimson Coins during one of those both betas uh, will get this currency back for new purchases on launch. And as a thank you, they'll receive 20% bonus credited on top of the Crimson Coins restored. Similar to what they did with Valorant if you played during the beta and you bought their currency, whatever it's called, Radiant Coins or something like that, you can get that, you got that back or we're supposed to get that back when the game came out. You'll find your Crimson Coins in the shop directly, no need to collect them. Please note this is region specific, so if you received your Crimson Coins back when you purchased them, if you purchased them in EU, you get them in EU, if you did in there, you get them on NA. For release events, for their official release, we have prepared the following two small events, which we will go over here shortly. For future bigger events, we will prepare a separate announcement for you to elaborate more on the activities and rewards included. So there's gonna be some seven day login gifts. After you reach student number one, you'll be able to claim a gift every day for the next seven days. That's pretty cool. The items include a red fox ground mount, mysterious parchments for gearing progression, and even an item level 60 piece on day seven. So if you don't know, there's actually a difference between ground mounts and um, flying mounts, at, as you see in their name. The ground mounts cannot fly, they can only be used on the ground, and of course, the other mouse can fly and be used on the ground. There's no duration limit on this event will end or renewed in the future with bigger expansions. So I guess it'll keep going uh, until they decide just when to stop, stop it from going. So you're not like in a hurry to get to level the student number one to before you get the event. Uh, you'll have time to be able to reach that. Quiz about Shinzo. During the event duration, at least that's what it sounds like. During the event duration, be sure to participate every Saturday and Sunday in the quiz event that you will be querying you about everything around Swords of Legend Online. You'll get rewards after answering all the questions per day correctly. The event will be available July between July 17th until August 1st, both dates included. All you need to do is click on the event button to display the questions. So it's like a multiple choice question, I'm guessing inside the game. So hopefully people will be able to get those things. Here are the two new skin tones. Uh, we were really pleased to hear your feedback and worked with the developers to include two additional skin tones during character creation. The following options are now available for both male and female characters. So these are the skin tones. You can have it on male and female. 
Um, they're kind of cool. I should be a lot of happy people that actually have uh, this tanned skin tone, a little darker skin tones, a little chocolate skin tones, instead of just the powder white skin tones that they had in the game. Character names. We've already released details on character name reservation, but to make sure nothing stands in your way, here are the naming rules in a nutshell. Names must contain between 2 and 20 characters. Names may contain letters A to Z, lowercase and uppercase, and numbers 0 to 9. You can also use the following special characters, full stop, hyphen, and underscores. The lowercase and uppercase vowels A, E, I, O, and U can be combined with the following diacritical marks, acute, grave, circumflex, and umlaut. I never knew what those marks meant, or what the names of them were. Cecidilia is also allowed. Note that no distinction is made between uppercase and lowercase letters. The name uppercase name 123 is considered to be the same as uppercase N name 123. Similar rules will also apply to naming your residents in the clouds or summoner pets. There are additional rules for pets and alliances. Alliance names can, only, can also include spaces, and pet names can only be 10 character long. Player cards were not active in the two betas. Now you can use them to show off your feats to other players. So like achievements. When customizing your player card, you can change the avatar, swap out the background, and pick a frame. The options available to you depend on unlockable content. Example, the golden wings are only available for purchasing the collector's edition. So if your character card has the golden wings, you will also have like physical golden wings. It's not just showing it on the character. <laughs> Swordmaster Adventure which is the overview of the main story quest as well as the side tasks required to unlock additional rewards, have been updated and is now no longer available on the world map. Instead, a new shortcut, Control L, as well as main menu entry has been created to better fit with our way of writing in the West. It is now in an, its own interface element, beautifully displaying assets for the various zones it's related to. Clicking on the various zones will display further details such as the rewards and the requirements for each. Additionally, it's now also possible to reread, listen anew to the voices and text for each quest you went through for the chapters. That's pretty cool. Before it was just like a, a list, a long list on the side of the screen that had all the things you had to do and you just clicked on it. And this way is kind of similar to like the uh, World of Warcraft dungeon guide or if you play Final Fantasy, the, the Final Fantasy Aether Current guide or um, Aether Current guide or where you can get all the, the hunt guide, those things. So those screens are set up the same where it shows the zones. And you click on the zone and see what you're missing and uh, or what the bosses are and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. PvP changes, 3v3 arena. Added a training mode for the 3v3 arena, which six players can join to play a better match against one another. The mode is available around the clock. Control K, dual battle. The regular 3v3 arena is now open longer from 11 a.m. to 4 a.m. the following day. They have some more changes. They adjusted the prices from PvP merchants, reducing the gold and reputation cost for purchasing gear, and added a missing faction achievement and removed superfluous, superfluous battle in the sands achievements. More changes are on here. Leveling progression. Further adjustments have been made to improve the leveling experience specifically for the levels 34 and 36. When keeping up with the biographies as well as tutorials requesting open world content to be achieved, the various related easily daily weekly quests, it should require but a little bit of open world questing in the Baxian Plateau to reach the max level. Heroic events in the Baxian Plateau, unlocked after finishing the main quest here, will now grant 50% more experience. Experience awarded from tutorials has been increased. Information messages have been added to guide players at 34 as well as at 36 toward potential sources of XP that they are missing outside of rerunning dungeons. Enemies within the envoy of the turquoise lantern zones will now be targeted towards either solo play, one player, or group play, 10 plus players. Previous team play monsters, five players, have become one player enemies accordingly to increase accessibility of these for leveling experience. Some biographies, due to an issue, didn't provide experience points or reward items, which also led to issues during progression. Underneath their quest, some quests now provide XP for companions, and companion XP from items has also been adjusted. Adjusted the weekly mentor leisure quest, so it now requires return to the Shadow Realm. <laughs> some books are now open automatically when required obtained through a quest. The quest now accepts the heroic PvE chest 60, even if it was crafted beforehand. 
Name overlays and cutscenes are now translated. Actual Essence XP added to some tutorials. That's cool that the name overlays have been translated. I wonder how they're going to look. Leisure Land increased the XP required to reach higher Leisure Land levels. Adjusted some Leisure Land items and the required reputation levels. So it sounds like people were really going ham on the Leisure Lands and that they needed to extend that a little bit so you can uh, do it a little bit longer before maxing out. Items. Remove the Sea Dragon Leaping Over Golden Waves Firework from the Crimson Coin Shop. This will later be at, available for Crystal Dust. So Crimson Coin and Crystal Dust is like, you spin Crimson Coin, you get some Crystal Dust back, I believe. That's the name of the other currency. And you use that currency to buy even more cosmetics. And I think it, the way they showed it in the live stream was like a one for one. So let's say you spent 100 Crimson Coin, you get 100 Crystal Dust. Login rewards now include Cloud Rider commands and writs of the continent. Feeding items to your pet generates less pet energy. Companion items have been improved, XP points corrected, and maximum level reduced. Minor adjustments to gold drops in dungeons and merchant costs. Possible soul stones are now always displayed and not hidden, depending on menu selection for beginner or student. Various dialogues in which players have to search for items have been changed so that capitalization is no longer important. With the music box and asset viewer, with the release client already with the character pre-creation, we've added the Gujian Old Music Box and the Gujian Old Editor folder to the game installation. They can be found in Tools. The Music Box has been translated to English and allows you to create own, your own note sheets for melody to be played with the Zip and Melody interface in-game. We are looking forward to hearing your creations upon launch. That's pretty cool. With the Editor, you can look through the various assets and create clips of and with the game Please note that we will not be able to provide any support, functionality, questions, or similar for this tool, nor will it be translated on launch. We're looking into this for the future. A guide by the developers in Chinese is available on the website. But that's kind of cool that you can create your own music and have it played in the game. Use the music box. Even more changes. The alliance menu has been improved to make more space for achievements and events. Improve the sales menu so that items which have reached a cap are grayed out you can change audio output even with the item is while the game is running without needing to restart example if you change the windows audio settings remove the water basins for washing hands various tweaks and improvements for to the appearance of the glyphs food tips buff settings and group window mastery tips and the combination tool workbench tips books biographies group recruitment tank role confirmation and many more locations the zither melody interface has been improved in terms of ui and translation you can now create folders in the Zither Melody songs list. Only the team leader can reset the progress of an ongoing instance if players are in the team. Adding additional control point options for dialogue and VO sounds in the game settings. The shortcut control plus L for biographies has been removed. It's intended to add them onto the Swordmaster's adventure menu, which is now linked to control plus L. In the future, increased amount of possible glyph slots from 6 to 7. Now we're down to the bug fixes. For bug fixes, for the PvP side, the bronze chest from PvP bouts now contains both the Amulet Coin Heaven and the Sealstone 2 PvP as rewards. PvP Astral Essences now only apply in PvP. The PvP Elite Warrior Celestine and Inscribed Celestine reward chests now contain gear of the correct level. Players who cross the barrier before the start of the round in Battlegrounds will now be dragged back. If you play a 3v3 match with or against NPCs, they will no longer use player names, but system names. The Battle in the Sands can no longer be entered via daily quest, and companions can no longer be summoned in PvP. For the Berserker, the Blowing wind in the Wind Berserker skill now works via the icon as expected. The Berserker Drill Advanced Charging More Strike is now only available once the associated Astral Blessing has been learned. Players will now get notified correctly when learning the first level of Crane Talents on Spell Sword. For Summoner, Dancing Minigame updated to contain localized assets. That's cool. Under Quest, it is now possible to complete chapters 2, 7, and 9 as the unavailable biographies listed as required have been removed from the list. Fixed an error and certain recipes which were required for tutorials. Text is no longer repeated when confirming a dialogue box. Adjusted the level description and the envoy of the Turquoise Lantern tutorial. Fixed an area which prevented certain biographies from being unlocked correctly. Fixed an area which allowed the daily instant exploration quest to be completed without grouping or matching. Fix the map for don't leave anyone out one to make the location more prominent. The fishing tutorial will no longer require you to go to a region that's not available yet. 
the Christian the quest series for a first interpretation of the Book of Mysteries will no longer lead to you an available region. Lead you to an available region. They said that backwards. For the items, uh, missing event avatars and frames are available again. Removed books which don't belong to the current vision version. The combination tool now supports selecting the talisman level. Jade without effects can no longer be socketed. Adjusted level required to use elixirs. The merchant who sells level 40 gear in the class areas has been removed. Adjusted the character creation costume preview to only include outfits actually available in the game. Fixed the duplicate visual of Brits of the Continent. All premium items can now be displayed in the shop. Dragon accessory can now be purchased from the Quinn League merchant. Embroideries can no longer be crafted. And some gems weren't turned correctly to be useful for our content. <laughs> for the system, they faced the problem which caused a long delay before receiving Crimson Coins purchased via Steam. New players no longer automatically start with the Novus buff. Switching to Chinese voiceovers now works as expected. The keybind used when fishing is now displayed correctly. If changed until now, it always stays Q. Skill macros no longer display the name of skills and targets in Chinese. Uh, fixed a rare scaling issue with the group menu. Student 1 now works for fulfilling alliance achievements. Uh, the effect monitor in the group setting now accepts spaces. The recruitment menu autoplay now works for all instances. The FPS counter is no longer stuck on the same number. The server list works again on computers running Windows 7 and navigation towards various crafting stores for ancestral records have been removed as these stores are non-existent in our version. For the NPCs, they fixed an issue with the guardians in the prison which made them invincible. The Gourmet Festival NPC dialogues no longer contain chest text. This is an issue which caused some bosses to have no golden shell. Under other, fix some issues in the game of Eternity card game. Fix some issues in the Raging River Ruins instance. Various localization changes in all languages. Battle companion no longer remaining on the map if they are left before the active time expires. Automatic instance invitations no longer accept players who are below the required level. And the production list in the cultivation menu now shows the coffee, the correct rewards, the coffee rewards. So that's all for the Swords of Legend notes that games comes out July 9th. Um, I think it's pretty fun. If you guys are looking forward to the game, let me know in the comments. And feel free to hit that subscribe button. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.